probably just switch it to picture mode, picture, picture. So you need like two pictures of each room, first right. video walk through, and then we're done. And I tried to like sweet talk the guy. Sure. Like, man, sure. it'd be five minutes. Seems like every time we work together, there's something. Oh, man, I'm going to put a path of this resistance type person. ITSO. Kali. Kali. No. I've heard you're an opener. Hello? What's, go What's going on, man? Okay. Is that how we come up? Alright. Hell yeah, Pete. Get out. You got a gun there on the ground? Nope. That's not a gun? Nope. Why are you lying on the place? These guys said they had to take pictures. I didn't tell them they couldn't come. Not a gun. What is that? It's a BB gun. <laughs> it's a BB gun, first off. And second off, I didn't tell them they couldn't come. I just talked to the lady and told her she could come. That they could come in. Today, I don't want to say it's a great video because we're going to be tackling a topic that's kind of controversial and let's face it nobody loves uh what we're doing today but today we are heading to an eviction we're a couple minutes out we're driving to the property uh the crew called and as i understand it right now the tenants are actually uh grabbing all of their belongings and, and putting them out trying to pack them up now I know a lot of people are going to be watching this and I'm expecting some type of hate from those liberal f out there like what the hell Holton Wise you guys are horrible how could you throw a family out it's snowing uh, blah 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 so this tenant has not paid rent October November, December January February March April that is seven months that this person has been living in this guy's home without paying any rent. We just pulled up to the house. I got my crew out there. That's John. And then we got all the the court appointed movers are all here. How, how much of their belongings are in the car? Or in the house rather? Probably about 75%. No one's there. I'm expecting they'll probably come back though because Dave said they pulled off right before. Um, yeah, we thought the boyfriend was Thompson's car the whole time. Because no. he kept staring at us. Well, yeah. Thompson's like, those guys videotaping. Evictions are already a pretty stressful situation, so we do not want to add any stress to this situation. We do not want to bother the crew or get in their way. Uh, so we're going to let these guys do their thing. That is a bailiff right there. We have another bailiff up there. This Escalade uh, right there is actually the tenant who is currently being evicted uh, she's kind of just running around screaming wanting to know where the landlord is remember this person has known that this has been coming for seven months this person has been stealing from the owner of this property for seven months now and uh, you know today is the day a lot of times these tenants they'll change the locks they'll barricade the doors so the eviction crew can't get in they seem to think that if they throw away the key when it's eviction day, we won't be able to get in. But uh, as you can see from John bringing a gigantic saw into this property, that's not the case. Guys are starting to stack the tenant's belongings on the side of the house. See a mattress, lamps, you know, just regular, regular stuff. John told me the house was uh, completely filled. So all the tenant's belongings are going to end up stacked on that side of the house right there. Now the way it works here in Cleveland is all of that stuff is gonna be left out there and whatever isn't stolen by scrappers, see a lot of the scrappers, they will follow these bailiff's cars and they will steal all of that stuff. But whatever isn't stolen or retrieved by the tenants by 5 p.m. tonight, this moving crew is gonna drive back to this property. They're gonna grab everything, put it in their trunk, put it in their truck. They're either gonna dispose of it, sell it, you know, whatever they gotta do. You know, one thing that really is starting to get on my freaking nerves, man, is just all the freaking chitter chatter on the internet about landlords being racist, me being racist, this or that, right? Like, we start doing this Tennis from Hell show, 
uh, as a way to just show people what's actually happening out there in the world, right? Like, obviously, uh, part of it is to market our investment services and things of that nature. But, like, I really, like, when I, when I started it, I would see the thing from, like, the liberal media and just, like, freaking woke turds on the internet just crying and vilifying the landlord for everything and i i always thought it was crazy i'm like what why is the landlord always looked at as the bad guy right like people don't understand how bad it is sometimes being a landlord people don't understand that in a lot of eviction situations the landlord's the victim i mean in almost all of them the landlord's the victim right you don't see people crying running into freaking the grocery store calling the the grocery store the bad guy because food is a right and people need to eat to live but yet when it comes to housing it's like housing is a right how could you remove someone from their house like bro we're providing a product you have to pay for the product if you don't pay for the product you get evicted we're not going to let you steal the fucking product right like Somebody goes to the grocery store, they steal milk, they steal meat, they steal freaking Doritos, whatever it is, dude. You don't see people uh, blaming the grocery store, right? So I've always looked at it as the same way, right? So that's how the Tents from Hell show got started. And we're just showing people, like, what is really like out here. And, dude, it's just so insane to me how little people pay attention. And no matter what it is that we're doing that I'm doing, uh, it's... No matter what we do, it's, oh, that's racist. Oh, you're a slumlord. Oh, you're a racist slumlord. Like, everything, right? Like, the most popular video we ever put out, right? Like, a as I talk to you right now, Steve, what, what episode are we doing right now? What episode is this going to be? We are episode 109. All right, so this is the 109th episode, dude. The most popular Tennis from Hell episode that we've ever put out, the most popular video on Holton Wise TV, outside of, like, paid ads, right? We have, like, commercials, advertising uh you know Holton Wise's investment services right uh but the most like popular natural video like entertainment based video that got like actual natural footage was the eighth episode of the tennis from hell show right so over a hundred episodes ago and uh the gist of the show was called like tenant driving a cadillac escalade gets evicted right this, this chick she lived in this this landlord's property for seven months and never paid the guy rent. But this fucking bitch is driving a Cadillac Escalade, right? And it's live eviction footage. We evict her live. This or that. And that video took off, dude. As I talk, it's got, I don't know, like 1,200,000, 1,300,000, 1,400,000 views. Somewhere in there, right? Like, the thing has gotten a tremendous amount of views over the last four years, right? We even ended up on Netflix because of this friggin' video, dude. I ended up on... Uh, something show with Hassan Minaj, right? The Patriot Act or some bullshit like that. That's how uh, big that this particular video gets, right? And if you go through the comments and you go through what's going on, you see friggin' thousands of comments of people uh, uh, just calling us racist. Or, or, or doing this or that, right? Like, literally thousands of comments just saying that we're freaking racist. And it's just so fucking ridiculous because if you actually watch the video, the chick that we are evicting is actually white. But yet, literally, there is freaking hundreds and thousands of comments in there. Like, oh, you're fucking racist. Why do you care if she's got a Cadillac, you fucking racist landlord? Like, bro. How does the race card come into play here, dude? The race card is not applicable in every situation in life, bro. As you guys watch, as you can tell, I appear to be a white dude, and I'm evicting a white woman. But everybody just wants to fucking spout their mouth and run their keyboard warrior shit. Don't even watch the entire video, and they're just like, Nope, this guy must be fucking racist. Like, bro, it's just obnoxious hearing that vilification. Like, dude, I'll tell you what. If a fucking black guy was renting an apartment building, renting an apartment for me, and he did not pay rent, 100% of the time, I'd be like, hey, black dude, you're getting evicted. No questions asked. But guess what? If a white guy doesn't pay his rent, 100% of the time, no questions asked, you're getting evicted. A Mexican guy doesn't pay his rent, 100% of the time, he's getting evicted. Fucking 
red, white, blue, green, blue, purple. I said blue twice. I painted myself blue as a genie one time. As a fucking genie! If you didn't pay your rent, 100% of the time you're getting evicted. Like we treat nobody differently uh, based upon any race. Race doesn't come into play. Likewise, right? If you are paying your rent, we have no problem with you, right? We have a problem with people who steal. Uh, but you know, if you're friggin' white, blue, yellow, green, purple, and you pay your rent, hey, thank you for being a good customer. Thank you for being a good tenant. Thank you for providing you a nice, safe, habitable home. Everybody's hunky-dory. Everybody's happy. But the moment you stop paying, that's it. You stole. You stole from us, so you're getting evicted. And it's got nothing to do with race. It's got nothing to do with color. It's got nothing to do with freaking culture. It's, it's just very simple, dude. It's the most black and white business there is to me. That's why we have the 100% eviction policy, bro. We don't run into any situations where you could say we treated you one way, uh, we treated this group of people one way versus treating another group. No, it, it's just a 100% baseline, dude. Uh, if you pay, it's all good. Uh, if you don't pay, you gotta go, bro. Pay to stay, man. Don't pay, you can't stay. That's how we roll. And uh, you just get people. They just they just run these comments. It's, it's just really getting obnoxious. I mean, shit, dude. People try to throw the race card in there at landlords just because they're looking for a payday. We got this one fucking guy. This fucking prick, man. Uh, this fucking guy is actually suing us now, uh, claiming racial discrimination because we evicted his fucking ass. Uh, he is a black dude, and we're evicting him. Uh, so he's getting evicted. Uh, and guess what? It's a duplex. The same same thing happened to the downstairs tenant. This dude lives upstairs. We evicted him. He's a black dude. Uh, chick downstairs also got evicted. She was a white chick. We evicted them both at the same time. Now he's suing us uh, in addition to the owner of that property and the property manager that took over the property after we took it over. He's suing them uh, claiming racial discrimination. <laughs> but the thing is... The other property manager that this fucking guy is suing, uh, mind you, right, like, we had to get the cops involved, right, to, to remove him and everything, and I think he's fucking la uh, lobbying racist allegations against the cops, right, so racist allegations against us, racially discriminating him, even though we evicted the white person that lived downstairs the same way, uh, racial discrimination against the uh, police, Claiming the owner, who's never been to Ohio, who's never met him, has no col uh, clue what color this guy is, throwing him under the bus, throwing the lawsuit at him, and then suing the other property management company. But the thing is, I work with that other property management company all the time. They're one of the bigger companies here in the Cleveland market. So, you know, we bounce clients back and forth. We do deals back and forth. I'm very familiar with how they operate their business over there. And, oh, guess what? Fucking spoiler, the dude that owns that property management company happens to be a black guy. So, you know... If you want to explain to me how that one works, uh, where a black guy racially discriminated against a guy for being black, you know, let me know, right? But you're going to get fuckers that they don't actually listen or pay attention to the entire story. They just spout off, spout off, because everybody's just so used to calling landlords slumlords or the landlords that are a bad guy or landlords are just evil, dude. It's just this constant negativity that's just, just been fucking spread against uh, landlords and everybody thinks they're just pieces of shit, right? And, uh, you know, that was a big reason to start this show, right? Obviously, reason number one, of course, is income, right? It, it helps pay the bills, right? This show is the most popular show on Holtonwise TV. This show gets us in front of friggin' hundreds of thousands of people, millions of views, things of that nature, right? There's revenue streams created from it. So, yeah, it, it, it's part of business, but... Uh, deep down the whole, the true cusp of what I really wanted to do, what my true vision for the Tennis from Hell show is, it, it is to get the true life experiences of landlords out there to, to give landlords uh, a medium to actually tell their sides of the story because you go on like friggin' MSNBC or I don't know, Vice or friggin' CNN, you know, any of these... Uh, you know, media news organizations, dude. All they want to do is, is try to figure out, you know, how they can fuck the landlord, how they can trip the landlord up, how they can make the landlord look like the bad guy. Like, dude, I had this one uh, journalist. He he was doing a story on me. Came to my office, interviewed me for a few hours. We just talked and talked. And by the way, if anybody out there, if you're a landlord 
and you get approached by the news media thinking they want to do a story on you, uh, just so you're aware. Like I've been in several, I've had several stories written about me, been in, been in a bunch of different stories. So it's not my first rodeo when it comes to the media. Uh, you could sit down and talk to a reporter for like four hours and, you know, by the time the story comes out, they're only using like three sentences of, of copy of what you said and it's not even necessarily going to actually be in the order uh, or the context you said it in, right? So don't think they're your friend, uh, especially if it's like a, a left-leaning uh, media outlet. They are not interested in telling the truth. They're interested in creating sensationalism that vilifies you as the landlord. Uh, because that appears to be what sells uh, papers, what gets clicks, right? So keep that in mind. But anywho, so I'm, I'm fucking doing this long interview with this dude. And it's clear the guy has no idea what real estate is like. No idea what happens in the business. And he lives in a nice little heighty-toity, what I would consider A-grade suburb in the Cleveland market. And he's never been exposed to the ghetto or just, you know, the sketchy neighborhoods that we go through, right? Like, he doesn't ever go to neighborhoods where you have to arm yourself for safety to make sure you actually make it home to your children at the end of the night because you never know what could happen, dude. Like, at any point in time, there could be some friggin' strung-out junkie coming over here to try to rob us, right? Like, it, it's just a very dangerous and, and messed-up situations you end up when you're in these neighborhoods, right? But a lot of these, like left-wing journalists they just won't accept that uh or, or acknowledge it right and i don't know if it's like ignorance because they don't really know or they're they're just willing not willing to accept it so like i'm talking to this dude he lives in this like a grade area right like houses on his street are like three four or five hundred thousand dollars crime is like almost nothing and this guy he's got a daughter she's uh like a senior in high school or just graduated high school, 18, 19, somewhere in that age range. And I'm, you know, showing them some video footage of some of the neighborhoods we go to, right? Neighborhoods, you know, that are even rougher than the one I'm currently driving through. Neighborhoods where I wouldn't be caught dead in that neighborhood without my sidearm, right? And I'm like, yo, you ever been in this neighborhood? And like, you know, show them some footage of our crew, our whole crew's out there. You know, some properties we won't go to alone. We won't go to unless like there's two guys that are armed. Because, you know, the level of crime is, is just so fucked up over there, right? I'm like, yo, you ever actually been here? You ever actually driven through this neighborhood, hung out in this neighborhood, dealt with the people there? Or do you just fucking write stories without actually knowing what the fuck you're talking about? And he's like, he admitted, he's like, no, you know, I've never been specifically to that part of town. No, I've never been there, right? He's in his little, little fucking suburban bubble, right? So I'm like, okay. You know, you, you fucking write your shit, talk about, you know, Holt Wise and... You know, we're fucking assholes about this or that. We judge this neighborhood harshly. We judge that neighborhood. I'm like, would you let your fucking daughter, uh, you know, your high school daughter or whatever, walk her dog around the block in this neighborhood? And, you know, I'm showing them this footage and there's just like bombed out house, bombed out house, vacant lot, vacant lot, trap house, crack house, fucking blight, crime, fucking strung out junkies everywhere, right? Fucking every color, right? Every color, white junkies, black junkies. Hispanic junkies, right? Just fucking strung out motherfuckers, right? It's all over the place. Just fucking, just blight and just like, ugh. Just, just you know, just a rough freaking neighborhood, dude. The hardcore ghetto, right? And, yo, did you let your daughter walk around this neighborhood? He's like, oh, you know, I'm sure there's very nice people in this neighborhood. I wouldn't, I wouldn't judge the neighborhood. I wouldn't have a problem with that. Yeah, fucking sure, right? Okay, then why are you fucking 50 years old? And you live 20, 30 minutes down the street from this particular area, but you've never actually been there, right? Like, dude, who are you fucking trying to kid, bro? Like, if you're driving down the fucking street and there's a trap house every four fucking houses, dude. Like, it's not about race. It's Hey, there's a whole noise truck right there. It's not about guys out there fucking doing the job. That's what I'm saying. We're in these neighborhoods all day, every day. And some of them are dangerous. And it's not about race or vilifying this or vilifying that it's about showing people what it's actually like like that's my mission on the tennis from hell show i want people to see what it's like to be a landlord if you want to be a section 8 landlord a low-income landlord can you make millions of dollars yeah you can i've made millions of dollars but does that mean it's easy no does that mean everybody's your friend no does that mean your tenants 
when it comes time to collect rent, they're like, oh, thank you, Mr. Landlord. You're a really great guy. Also, here's some fucking cookies. No, it's not like that, right? You're probably more likely to get shot by a fucking tenant than get a thank you as a landlord. And again, part of that is because of how fucking the media and society and reporters, how they present landlords, right? They don't really present the true story. And everybody just likes to fucking bag on landlords and call them racist for this, call them for that. Like, again, I'm a white guy having a video uh, evicting a white tenant, and there's friggin' hundreds of comments like, you're a racist prick! Like, that doesn't even equate, man. It, it just fucked up, right? So, that's what we do here on Holden Wise TV. That's what we do here with the Tenants from Hell show. The entire idea behind this show is to really just pull that curtain back, right? Just, the money is great. You can make a lot of it, but if you go into this thinking it's just fucking easy and it's just sunshine and rainbows and you're just going to be like, oh, I'm a landlord now and these rent checks just automatically uh, roll into your lap and you don't have to do any fucking work, dude. You're going to get you're gonna get beat. You're going to get beat down. This business will fucking chew you up and spit you out, dude. You got to have the proper expectations uh, when you're investing in low-income housing. Like, that's another thing that we, we get, right? If, if you watch a lot of our content and you, you, you read a lot of articles about landlords and, and you get the wokies, you know, the fucking woke motherfucker, the woke mob, all those keyboard warriors living in their fucking mom's basement, bitching and whining and moaning because they can't pay off their fucking student loans when they're the motherfuckers that racked up $40,000 of college debt in a fucking philosophy degree, like, having a goddamn philosophy degree is gonna make you some money in the real world, like, that's gonna feed your fucking family, and now you're fucking crying and whining about it, getting the taxpayer to fucking pay your bills, you fucking pussies, those are the kind of motherfuckers, uh, that are crying and, and whining about how landlords are evil, and landlords need to get a real job, and landlords don't have to actually work for their money, and it's, you just automatically, just all these rent checks come in and, and that's it. When in reality, dude, that's not what it's really like when you're a landlord, right? Being a landlord uh, is, is not that easy. It's, it's actually one of the hardest jobs you can do, right? And if you're really good at the job, you're really good at what you do, you create your systems and, and you get the business uh, you know, working and growing and, and scaled up very big like we've done here at Holton Wise. Yeah, you will make millions and it does, of course, become easier. Uh, so I'm not saying this to complain about like my job. Like, oh, my job's hard. Feel bad for me. No, this, this is the best job I've ever had. I, I love being a landlord. I love being an investor. I've made millions doing it and uh, we've helped other people make millions doing it. So I, I am by no means... Uh, complaining or asking for sympathy right now, but the notion that it ain't tough, that it ain't hard, that everybody is going to see the level of success that I've seen or the level of success that people that work with us have seen, uh, that's just a false narrative. That is, that is incorrect. Uh, for every landlord that we're seeing that is killing it, that is doing great, that is making a ton of money, uh, we're seeing other landlords uh, we're just dealing with these kind of people, dealing with low lowlifes, dealing with scumbags, dealing with people living in the ghetto, dealing with tenants who won't pay rent, dealing with tenants that will lobby frivolous lawsuits because they think the landlord's a mark and they believe, hey, the landlord's just got deep pockets, he'll just fucking pay me to go away. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.